But Georgie, if you want to like, like say something really quick so everybody can see you on speaker view, that'd be cool. Yeah. Hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my good friend, Georgianne Moline. She was a freshman at the U of A 12 years ago. Um, she's actually a 400 meter hurdler and has competed in the Olympics. And back in 2012, she was actually a finalist and placed fifth. Um, she runs for Team USA and she also is an Adidas athlete. Um, she was on the indoor 4x400 relay and broke the American record and won the world championships for Team USA. So she's an awesome friend. She's got great experiences. She's going to be talking to us about what it's like to actually be disciplined enough to be successful at a high level um, and kind of like what, you know, some sacrifices looked like along the way and like why that was valuable to her kind of in the end. And she's also going to touch a little bit on like what it's like to work under pressure. So um, take notes. She's awesome. If you guys do have questions, um, write them down. We're going to actually extend like for anybody who wants to stay a little bit later and ask questions, we'll kind of keep it open a little bit past eight, but anybody who doesn't want to can obviously leave. Um, so you just listen to her. She's got some really good experience to tell us about, and I've been um, getting to poke some fun at her all week. So I'm, I'm really excited to hear from her as well. So um, put your virtual hands together for Georgianne Moline. Oh, thanks, Alex. I love Alex so much. She makes me seem a lot cooler than I actually am. Okay. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, thanks for having me. So I kind of am just going to tell a little story and then just kind of hit some points. And like Alex said, just leave it open for questions because I want to talk about things that you guys want to know, you know? So, um, so yeah, story time. So in college, you know, my first couple of years, um, I wasn't very disciplined. I was just kind of like there for the college experience and I got a scholarship. So I was like, okay, at least paying for college. And, you know, I didn't really understand what I was there for. Um, and then my junior year, my coach had to talk with me and he's like, Hey, Jordan, you know, I can't want this more than you. And, um, you got to decide what you really want. And it just like hit me. I was like, okay, like I need to decide if I want to party and stuff like, cool. Like I need to do that. Or I need to really put my focus into something, you know? And I love track. I love it so much. I've done it. And, you know, I started in high school and then I was like, no, I work my butt off every day. I want to see some results. So, um, yeah, my junior year is kind of when things just started to like play for me. And I was like, all right, let's go. And I had, like, I started the season off, like in the fall, really great. And then I get injured and I'm like, are you serious? Like I decided to make this move and I'm getting injured. Like this isn't happening. Right. And then, um, so I'm like, hey, you know what? That's okay. Like, maybe this injury is going to teach me a lot. And it, I mean, it taught me so much. I'll get into that. But um, I got injured. And then I just started like, what can I focus on? Right? I'm like, okay, my diet, I can really change my diet. So I'm gonna do that. And I just became disciplined in like the tedious things, the things that, you know, that I knew that were important that I kind of got away from. And um, then the ball started rolling. And I'm like, okay, I win my first race. And I'm like, okay, this is paying off. This feels good. Right. Win my second, third, fourth, fifth, I'm undefeated all year. And I'm like, okay, this feels good. And I, you know, I make it to nationals and I'm the favorite to win. And I'm like, this is crazy. I'm about to win a national title. And I mean, it, it just, it was the most incredible feeling and I'm out there and I'm running. So for some of you that don't know, you know, when you go to nationals, you have three rounds to run a preliminary, a semi and a final. So I'm in the preliminary round and I'm like, I got this easy, right? Make it to the semis, go to the semis. I fall on my face on hurdle eight. I get up. Of course I take last. I don't make it to the final. And like, I just, I mean, I just started crying. I was like, this isn't happening. I worked my butt off. I was undefeated all year. Like, how is this happening to me? And that I didn't know it in the moment, but like, that was a huge opportunity for what was about to come that I di I couldn't see, you know, because that's all I was working for that whole year was just to make nationals. I was like, just let me make nationals. And, um, I fell. And when I got up, you know, and I was done with the race, like I, I still finished, but, um, I go to my coach and he's like, Georgian, um, do you want to end your season like this? Like, and I was like, no, this is like the worst feeling. And he's like, you make that Olympic team. And I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, this man's crazy because I look at these girls, I know what Olympians look like and they do not look like me. I was like super skinny and just like lanky. And I was like, there's no way I'm making this Olympic team, especially with who I have to, you know, beat. 
But nonetheless, I was like, you know what? No, you know what? I'm just going to put this crazy dream out there and just go for it because what do I have to lose? Like I'm nothing to lose. I already made the trials with the time that I ran. So I, you know, I get back to square one. I'm like, all right, back to like when I had my injury, I'm like, okay, what can I focus on? What is going to help me be great? And I started to just think of everything that was in my control, you know, like, okay, I can go to bed at a good time, make sure I get nine hours of sleep, you know, watch with my diet. Um, and I really had to make some like really, really tough choices. Like my friends and stuff, you know, they wanted to go and party and I'm like, Hey guys, I can't go with you. And they're like, come on, Georgian, it's not going to hurt. I'm like, yeah, but it's not going to help. You know? And I think that was a question I had to ask myself, like, not if it's going to hurt me, but was it going to help me? And so, um, yeah. So anyways, um, oh, okay. I was like, what is Alex doing? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. I thought maybe I was like muted or something. So anyways, and I was like, okay, you know, and so really I started to lose friends and, um, but I really started to see who was there to support me. You know, I, I, you know, my mom, my family, like they were really there supporting me like, Hey, you know what? This dream is not crazy. You work your butt off and anything can happen. Why can't it be you? And so I really, really, so also I didn't mention this, but from nationals to the trials was about a month. So I had a month to just get back into it. You know, I knew I was in shape and I leave that part up to my coach. And so anyways, I'm just, you know, eyes forward and I'm focusing and like, I, I make it to the trials. I go to the first round and I like win the first round. I'm like, okay, this is great. I make it to the semi, make it to the semi and I make it to the final. And I'm like, okay, there's eight lanes. There's eight girls. I just got to be five of them. Like I just have to be top three to make the Olympic team. And I play second and I made the team. And it was like the most incredible feeling because, you know, I would have been, if I would have made national, if I would have won nationals, I would have been satisfied. And it really triggered something in me. Like, why would I have been satisfied with that? Like, why wouldn't I, even if I won, why wouldn't I have gone and try to go to the Olympics and do something great there, you know? And so it really taught me like, no, I'm going to set the bar high because I can reach it, you know? And so, um, yeah, I make the team go on to the Olympics, you know, and make it to the final and place fifth and all of that. And it, it was incredible. And, um, but after that, you know, 2013, I was like, gosh, I'm on a high, right? And I come back and I go back to school. I'm a senior. And that year, I also make the world championship team. And I tell you this next part, because like, I've learned one thing I learned about myself that I never, you know, that I'm so proud to say is that I'm, I'm so resilient because in 2013, I was at the world championships and I fell on my face again. And then um, I was at, you know, fast forward to another year. I'm at a big, big meet um, in Eugene. It's called Prefontaine Classic, all on my face. And then I start to get like people on social media saying, wow, Georgian's the girl that falls. She falls way more than she goes over hurdles. And it started to get to me mentally. And that's when I went through a really, really, really tough time. And um, I, I really had to really dig deep down with some internal things with myself of like who I am. Because for so long, you know, I think as athletes, if you guys have ever, you know, most of you've done sports, I'm sure, or like anything, or, you know, with school, you define yourself what by how you do in a race or how you do on a test, right? So for me, winning and making the Olympics was how I defined my worth. I was only worthy when I was on the track and I was only worthy when I was winning and breaking records. And so when I was falling on my face and, you know, I wasn't winning every race, you know, there was articles that came out like, Georgian Moline loses. And I'm like, and then I started to question, am I not allowed to lose? Am I not supposed to lose because I'm this Olympian? I don't get it. And I really had to dig deep down and realize that like, um, oh, sorry, I was reading that. <laughs> um, I had to realize that, you know, I had to really find out who I am because I've always defined myself as Georgian Moline, the athlete. And that's when all these setbacks really forced me to sit with my thoughts. One other setback I want to talk about, which I think is most recent and the one that I learned so, so much is that, you know, out of college, I signed with Nike and I was making six figures over, you know, I mean, I was doing really well. I was 22 years old and I was just like on a high. And then when it was time for my contract to be over at about five years, um, I was like, oh, they'll resign me, of course. And they decided like, you know what, maybe not because I had gotten injured right that year when my, um, it was time to resign. And I was like, this isn't happening. Like, this is like, what? Like, how do they not see my worth? Long story short, they didn't sign me. 
and it was a weird time for track. I didn't get signed by anyone, even though I was top five in the world. And I was like, wow. But in those moments, like that whole year, I wasn't getting a paycheck. Thank God I saved a lot of money because <laughs> I had bills to pay. I'd support myself. That was tough. But um, yeah, so I really, that was the most, that was the time where I, I grew the most, you know, for me, I really learned a lot about myself. And I think that's really important that, you know, for all of you, especially like I look at this time, like with this coronavirus and things going on and how it's really shaken people up. I treat it like an injury because you can either come out of this stronger than you came into it, or it can just rock your world where you don't come out of it. And if you really just, this is forcing us to sit back and really realize that, you know what? Okay. What is in my control right now? Because, you know, for me, I don't have a facility to work out in. Thank God I found like a track I can work out on, but a lot of things have changed for me, but just like an injury, it's teach me to go back to the things that have really worked for me. And one thing that's huge, huge, we're creatures of habit, right? So for us having a routine and, um, and setting our days that way is, is so important. So when you start your day, whether it's, you know, for me, I like to get up, um, put on makeup as if I'm going somewhere and just feel like ready. I'm like, okay, you know, and, and really just, I have a habit tracker. So just, um, <laughs> so just put like everything in there that I want to do during that day and checking it off is like so satisfying. So really do that. It will really put you back into a place where you feel like you have some control because I feel like right now we feel like we don't have a lot of control over this situation. Um, so that's been like the best thing for me. So I wrote some notes down because I was like, I'm going to forget little things. <laughs> look at Alex habits. That's right. Habits are everything. Like that's how we function and that's how we thrive as human beings. Like it's really important. So, um, what else did I put? I'm going to open it up soon for questions. Cause I feel like I do better when people just ask me things, but I have a couple of things I want to say. Um, you're, oh yeah. And one other thing is like, I think when, you know, I know there's with what, with like Southwestern, you guys, I mean, I, I remember talking about like dealing with sometimes, um, you deal with uh, like denial, like, Oh, I don't, you know, and like you to hear a lot more no's than you hear yeses. And I think for me, um, I, Oh yeah. Like that's going to happen. Like with, even with track, like there's so many races that I lost and lost. And if I would have stopped, when I was losing my first couple of years and just like, you know, I don't even care anymore. I don't want to do this. I would have never been in the place that I am. And I'm so proud of where I am and what I've learned. And I've made my weaknesses, my strength. I was so competitive. So when I was bad at something like an injury, right, you get injured for a reason. And I was like, okay, why did this injury happen? What was my weakness? And I'm going to make it my strength because I had so many doctors tell me too, like, I mean, I've had stress fractures, um, I had a, a herniated disc in my back and all these things. And I can't tell you how many doctors told me, just so you know, you're not going to come back stronger and, and you're not going to and faster and like how you were before this injury. And I was like, uh, to hell I am not. Yes, I am. And so for me, it was a matter of like, no, no, you know, I'm going to find out why this happened and I'm going to make it my strength and I'm going to come out of this better. And that, that's happened every single time every single time, instead of focusing on like what I couldn't do or why it happened or why is this happening to me? I was like, no, it's happening for me, not to me. It's happening for me. And every time something like that has happened, like I said, something more beautiful has come from it. And I'm just so grateful to, um, to be where I am right now. You know, I've been pro for seven years and that's, I mean, it's exciting. I have two more Olympics to look forward to. And, um, yeah. So anyways, I'm just, I'm just blabbering now. <laughs> so, let's see what else I think I, oh yeah. And I kind of talked about like discipline <laughs> and just like, for me, like if you really would have known me like my freshman or sophomore year, you guys, you would just be like, no way is, oh wait. Oh, okay. I went to someone else. Sorry. Um, yeah. If you would have known me my freshman year, I mean, I just did what I want. I had really no discipline. And I think that was the biggest thing where I started to see these changes is I was like, you know what, I, I got to make some choices that I don't, I, I like are going to hurt my friends, like not wanting to go party with them or not want to eat wings every night and, and stuff like that. But, um, the people that were re really important to me, like respected that. So anyways, um, sorry if I talked fast, hopefully you guys understood everything I was saying. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, I kind of, 
And Alex, you can kind of remind me if there's something I should have hit on because Alex, she knows my life. So <laughs> if there's something you wanted me to talk about or something I didn't touch. No, with. you're doing amazing, Georgie. If you had one like piece of advice for anybody working under pressure, what would it be? Oh yeah, I wanted to talk about under pressure. You know, never make <laughs> under pressure. Uh, never make anything bigger than what it is. So, so often I, I deal with anxiety and I deal with putting so much pressure on myself. And really, I mean, it, it doesn't help the situation at all, you know, um, but really understand that these are opportunities and how great that you have the opportunity to do these amazing things and to make this money doing what you love. And so when you just kind of simplify it for me, it's really like what I like to do is I simplify it like the Olympics. I'm like, it's just another race. Yeah, it's a big race with lots of people, but it's just another race. I don't have to be anything but myself and same for you guys like you don't have to be anyone but who you are like you, you just be yourself and just enjoy the process and being present if anything right now coronavirus is teaching us is to be present and I'm learning that every day like hey you know what 2021 is when the next Olympics is going to be and I can't think that far ahead like right now is what I have and who knows what can happen from now and then and I'm going to enjoy today and I'm going to give it everything I got so that in the end, like, I think, you know, my future self can look at me now and be like, wow, Georgian, thank God you were, you know, you did what you did a year ago, because look at where you are now. And, um, but just, and also don't be too hard on yourself. Like you put pressure on yourself. That's because you care. And that's great. That's so awesome that you care because that's what I think about too. Like putting pressure on myself, but it's because I really care and I really want to do well and that's okay. But just, you know, yeah, I think I'm just still blabbing. So yeah, I keep going Alex. <laughs> No, I love it. Um, I think that was great. Can we get literally a virtual round of applause for Georgia? And you guys oh, can thanks. unmute yourselves and clap for her. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh. Oh. That, was so awesome. that was so awesome. Was um, okay. <laughs> all right. So I'll bounce. So I'll bounce. So I'll bounce. Um, so we're going to open it up for questions. Um, I think we're really just going to do kind of like some last minute questions with Georgian. Um, we can take as much time as we want or as we need. Um, and if anybody has anything that they need to get to, um, it's okay to log off. We're gonna do still like a closing statement to so stay on. I know Heather's gonna say something and so is Liz potentially. Heather? I just had a question. Oh, no. question, cool. So no. the way I'm actually gonna facilitate questions is because I literally can't see everybody's screen at once. I don't think Georgian can either. Um, I'm going to ask if you guys have a question, can you write your name in the chat and then we'll call on you kind of based on order and then we'll, we'll try to get to everybody as soon as possible. Wait, or Heather. <laughs> yes, Heather. <laughs> um, okay. So we want to also respect your guys' time. Don't know what you guys have going on. Most of you guys are just sitting at home, so should probably stay, but want to give you guys the option. Um, so a quick couple closing um, remarks to jot down. So the virtual parent coffee is going to be April 25th. So write down April 25th. Your parents, siblings, cousins, they're all welcome to come. Anyone that want, wants to learn more about what we're doing and is maybe has questions or concerned about what you're going to be doing this summer and what you're going to be involved in. So April 25th, um, that is